Morning, I'm Toby Hodges from the Cannes Yacht Show 2023. And it's the show of the big cats, obviously. So we've got the 60 and 70 and 80 sun reefs there. We've got a gunboat 72 over there. I'm standing on a 59 foot Fontaine Pajot Samana. And I'm here to announce the world premiere of the Fontaine Pajot 80. And this is one seriously big cat. New generation, 2023. Let's jump on board before the rest of the world do. as well start here because you might begin to get an appreciation of both the height and volume of this boat. Obviously it's a flybridge yacht but look how chunky these bows are and look how high they are. So this has 11 meters of beam and if I come up alongside here you'll see I can't even reach, I'm nowhere near the top of that freeboard of this yacht. And that'll explain some things, especially when you see the volume within. You can see the natural light going into these cabins. And also uh, it has a solid forward deck. There's no need for a trampoline. There's not going to be any splash on a yacht this size either. But let's try and jump on board. It's getting busy already. So while I'm down here, I'm going to go straight into the engine room, which is not your typical glamorous thing to do on a super yacht, but they're pretty impressive spaces. So each one has deck access from that hatch and you can come in through these steps as well you're straight into the steering gear here and then into the engine room proper and the thing that's really nice about this again the freeboard buys you this headroom to be able to stand and get it well maintenance services so you've got your water makers here gen set inboard and then your main engines 175 horsepower i think on these with all your filters mounted up on the bulkheads there so yeah, access to servicing is not an issue. Also allows for massive tanks. So I think there's over two, maybe something like two and a half thousand liters of fuel tanks on this, 1600 liters of water tanks. Obviously this tender platform is a prime feature as well. And so this can fit a 4.6 meter tender on it, I believe. Um, and that would stow there permanently, but it also has integrated in there a gangplank. So the gangplank doesn't have to come out of the transom itself. Massive piece of hydraulic engineering there. Be able to raise and lower that. Um, and then again, the same here into this engine room and lazarette on this side. See the steps there up onto the deck access side of it. No shortage of relaxation space either on here. And they've really thought about that in super yacht terms. So there are obviously so many places when you consider the flybridge, the foredeck and this aft area here, but also how you would orientate yourself. So yes, there's the traditional cockpit. You sit around a cockpit table under the hard bimini, or you sit and face outboard and have a terrace on the sea. So I'm going to show you on the other side because they're both the same and these parts lower so yeah you have another little snug cockpit area in there you got a sunbed area back on this and this all raises it was lifted up just now um, and below that is toy, toy storage so that fits a big jet ski inside there if you want it or obviously dive gear whatever other toys you want but then on this side you can see with this terrace lowered so the bulwark folds out and then you sit here and you've got your sea views, well, marina views at the moment, but it's a pretty neat feature to have. Uh, they're just cleaning the flybridge above me, hence the water pouring off here. And as you can see the controls for opening and closing these wings, as they call them, fold out bulwarks. Uh, and let's move forward, because there's plenty of people, designers and Fontaine Pajot group assembling in the interior looks like. Look how wide these bulwarks are. Again, uh, keeping the views throughout the boat has been really important. So you can see straight through the bulwark 
really high sense of security on the deck, but also being able to see through them, important from seated position on the inside. And then we're up onto the foredeck and you'll notice uh, these big hatches here. So these are shallow lockers each side for paddleboard stowage. And this is what I've mentioned before, no need for a trampoline here because it's so high up. So they've made it a hard, hard foredeck area. So loads of sunbathing space and yeah, the old jacuzzi on the starboard side as well. I haven't been into these four peaks, but I'm told um, they are optional crew cabins as well. But you will see when we go into the crew cabin area, there's loads of good integrated crew space within the boat itself. But this is if you have um, the max capacity. So this boat can be have a four plus four, five plus five and six plus six. So six cabins and six heads layout. So if you are stacking the guests in, uh, you need the crew to be able to um, service the, the boat appropriately. So in that case, you can have a, a crew member in here or and in the other side as well. Nice to have the direct access through the watertight door from the saloon. So that's just an empty four peak or sail locker at the moment. And I just lifted one of these hatches up on the foredeck here to show that paddleboard stowage as well. Make a pretty good hot tub in there, wouldn't it, as well? Imagine that, spoiled for choice for hot tubs on a boat. This is vast sheltered cockpit area and obviously it's a bit more of a semi custom approach on this so you can choose you know whether you want your fixed table both sides or coffee tables that sort of thing as well uh, and then the main layout choice inside is going to be whether you want a galley up or a galley down and this one has the galley down so you just have one big area in there so main flybridge access from the cockpit so this the first boat has obviously got most of the options you can have on here, including a carbon mast and some nice sails. So sailing is important uh, for Fontaine Pajot, always it has been, um, being able to say easily control the boat. So all systems led to twin helms here on the flybridge. Uh, and reportedly the skipper on the delivery, they're doing seven knots in nine to 10 knots breeze, which is not bad. It's designed to keep moving and sail all right not be a motor sailor. <laughs> so you'll see, as I say, it has, this is loaded with options, including these integrated glass solar cells. Uh, so basically, if you have those as well as the, as well as these ones on the roof as well, the, the more flexible panels, uh, you can boost solar capacity from the flybridge. So you've got the flexible ones on the flybridge roof and the flexible ones here plus the glass on both. And so you can go from four to 8.2 kilowatts in total. And I know what you think about the glass ones, and I have asked, but they are sandwiched. The cells are sandwiched. So at the end of life, if you need to replace them, they can be, um, the cells are glued between two pieces of glass. So they can be removed and replaced again at the end of life. As I say, all sales systems brought to these twin helm stations here um, and that keeps the rest of the art the flybridge aft you know for socializing and relaxing <laughs> when you've got the aft traveler on that bimini fixed bimini there and apparently this if you had a cozier or spinnaker sheet as well that would lead up to these winches as well i can't quite see how the leads work but i'm sure they figured that out so slightly less people in here now. So have a quick look through here. So if you had the galley up version, that would be up here. And you see you've still got plenty of seated area. And it's nice how, as I said before, from here you have the cutaways in the, in the furniture itself. So you can look out through the glass screens in the bulwark as well. So it's a very Rakapo design. So the Naval Architecture is by Olivia Rappapo and the interior design by his wife Isabel. Feel the ventilation coming through that door and obviously really nice to be able to go in and out from here onto the forward cockpit. 
internal pilot station. Um, and let's see what's down in these hulls. So this one has doesn't have an owner's hull layout, so the owner uses or will use the VIP cabin, which means on this side, this would normally be where the owner's cabin is, and here it's split into two doubles. Nice thwart ships, walk around berth, obviously en suite as well, with a separate shower compartment there. And yeah, there's Fontaine Pajot, they've beefed, uh, they've improved, obviously specced up the build quality as well in relation. So this is built in the same factory as the 5967. Um, and yeah, higher grade LP with integrated um, leather in the, in the doors there. And plenty of fabric around and leather, nicely done. shortage of space. So yeah, if you had the owner's cabin, it would fill from all of this area here would be one cabin with all you want with it, your spa and everything else in there as well. I haven't been down this port side yet. I imagine it will be a mirror of the starboard side layout here. So you get two more double cabins in here. So how many is that? I'm going to lose count, see? So that's four double guest cabins. Plus there's in this layout, the VIP cabin, which we'll go and look at, uh, and the crew mess, which, and crew quarters, which I think is a prime feature of this boat. So this is moving down from midships into the VIP cabin, which is say the owner will use as his cabin or her cabin. You can probably see why. I mean, oh, I wouldn't mind being a VIP guest. What a phenomenal amount of space in here. I wonder where the shower is. Oh, it's probably aft, look. But I mean, we have to remember this is 80 foot modern generation carpets being fitted today, by the way. It is a brand new boat, just been finished in time for the show. Yeah, we have to remember this is the equivalent space of a 100 foot plus monohull. Very nice. So yeah, if you've got any friends that are buying a, a Fontaine Pajot 80, try and get the VIP guest cabin. Staircase up quite sharp edges, annoyingly. I don't really see the need for that. But otherwise, interior design all done nicely and obviously to appeal to lots of people. So this is obviously a service area because you move down here into the crew and galley area. So you're straight into a crew mess here. And then you have crew quarters. So you have obviously sleep two in here with stowage space below the bunks and nice, nice that they're facing thwart ships. So facing outwards. Uh, and there's the heads and shower space in there as well. This I think is a laundry area. Yeah. So washer and dryer behind the heads door there. There's a sliding door here obviously to shut off this whole crew area and another one here close off the galley itself. Uh, yeah, massive galley uh, and captain's cabin further aft linking direct. So that, that 
skipper's cabin with its own access from deck would stay as is, um, no matter what layout I have. If you have the galley up, um, then this becomes uh, the crew area and that would be another guest cabin further forward. But as you can see in this format, massive galley. And I think it's really nice to have the skipper's galley cabin with its own access. And then in this format to have the crew area all by the galley as well. Um, and plenty of space really for this two, four man crew and, um, uh, and plenty of space for cooking and that sort of thing, refrigeration space. So you've got extra fridges, fridge freezer space under here as well. An induction stove and then um, proper Miele domestic style fridge and freezer below further aft. Yeah, and as I say, to have a captain's cabin linking from deck, so the steps behind here, that always stays in this format. Um, makes a lot of sense because you keep a happy crew and you keep the crew longer. And that is the Goldwing door style access and the steps down into the skipper's cabin from the cockpit. Nice place, wake up, go for a quick swim before you start work. Just gonna sit out on my own terrace, my own wing door here. I haven't, I haven't been able to do that before in a sailing yacht, not that I can remember. Anyway, this Fontaine Pajo 80 starts at around 5 million. Uh, this one, has, I'm guessing, around between a million and a two in extras um, added to it, including the carbon mast and sails and that sort of thing, and the trim of the boat. But it's an interesting market area because Lagoon launched there 77, I don't know, six or seven years ago. So say Fontaine Pajot have had a 59 and a 67, but its owners have been asking for this larger boat. So they've, before this one was even here, they've sold six of it. They're aiming to build about four a year and it sits in an interesting area of the market, which we can see here at the Cannes Show, because you've got the lagoon here, and you've got this, you know, that start around this five million mark, and then the Sunreef 80, which starts at more than that, but is a more semi-custom boat. Um, but these are, yeah, coming from mainstream production yards. Massive amount of volume and living space um, in a new generation design that gives you all that extra volume. You can appreciate that as well. Hope you enjoyed the tour. I probably forgot some areas. There's so many of them. Maybe we'll have to sail a big old yacht like this one day as well. See you next time. <laughs>